we think the stream is going. But yeah, okay, so good, all right. Well, uh, I'm Vance Stevens, and uh, I'm one of the coordinators for EVO, Electronic Village Online. We're going to tell you all about that, but I'm not going to take up more time. We're sort of on a tight schedule because we have a lot of presenters both here and from abroad who are going to join us. We're going to bring them in on Zoom. This is Zoom. Martha is there. She's going to join Christine uh, Bauer-Ramazani to uh, introduce EVO. Uh, and then I want to show you a document that we've been using to organize this. That's the one you see in the corner of the screen. And uh, that document uh, has a QR code, I think, that takes you to it. But anyway, um, basically, this is a crowdsourced document that everybody who's presenting here, uh, about 20 people, I suppose, have been working on this document to produce this program. We're here at Thursday, and I guess we're just going to go ahead and get started. So we have a PowerPoint we can show you here. Christine, you probably want to use that, or should I, should I keep, maybe I could keep, uh, Martha's going to join you, so we, we'll keep her in, the, in, the, in one corner. So maybe you could flip between windows, would that work? Would you be able to present like that? I think so. I will okay, try. And, and just, uh, that would be good. Yes, okay. Okay, so thank you for being here this morning. Um, we do have quite a few people in the audience, which makes me really happy because we often don't have so many people here because this is the Electronic Village Online, but uh, for people that are here, I hope you will be joining that Electronic Village Online at some point uh, online. Uh, so I'm Christine Bauer Ramazani, one of the co-founders of the Electronic Village Online. Um, it was a special project by the Call Interest Section in 2000. It actually started in 1998 and then 1999. And then in 2000, somebody told me, okay, Christine, got to do this project. And um, so three of us, Tom Robb, uh, Susan Gare, and I started this project in 2000, and we held our first EVO sessions with 120 participants in 2001. So we have our 20th anniversary year coming up, and we will be celebrating a little bit. So um, I wanted to show you the mission of EVO just briefly. Uh, so Vance, uh, you could click on that. There it is. We use um, a wiki for the delivery of the sessions and all the information is there and uh, we have this on the Electronic Village Technology Showcase site. Uh, you can click on the links there. Um, everything is in the stream, on the YouTube stream, so you can go there and look at things again. Uh, so the mission of EVO, as we established it back in 2000 and 2001, um, is to provide free online professional development for ESL and EFL teachers all over the world in a collaborative setting. There is not supposed to be any kind of advertising, um, and we have kept to that for all these years. It is free. It is it's staffed by all volunteers. They're all teachers. They're all very engaged. And um, it is quite a bit of work to put all this together. So the, we have a coordinating team that puts together the sessions every year. And they run from January to February um, for five weeks. We start with a an online uh, synchronous kickoff meeting and end with a synchronous uh, closing ceremony. In between, uh, the Electronic Village uh, moderators, Electronic Village online moderators, may hold additional uh, synchronous meetings if they wish. So this year, we had over 3,000 participants all over the world from 36 countries. 
Um, and in total, since 2001, we have had more than 35,000 participants all over the world. So these are uh, incredible statistics, and we're happy that <laughs> EBO is reaching teachers all over the world. And it makes me proud <laughs> of something that we started so long ago. So um, one thing that I wanted to tell you, and then I will turn it over to Marta, is we have a call for proposals going out. Uh, and that will be, um, if you could go to that slide, my slide, uh, Vance. Uh, no, the one previous to that. Um, whoops. Well, the call for proposals uh, will be going out um, between July and August, and it will close in September. So if you would like to offer an EVO session uh, as a moderator, we usually have teams of moderators doing that. One person alone is not going to be able to field all of the emails that come in and all of the discussions and all of the work to be done. Uh, so there are the deadlines. And then EVO 2020 will start on uh, Sunday, January 11th, and run for five weeks until February 16th, 2020. And with that, I will turn it over to Marta, who will tell you a little bit more about what the EVO coordination team does. I think she uh. No, I'm the host and that's the host Okay, go, go, go. Yes, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me, Vance? Yes, Marta, we can hear you. Please go ahead and start. Oh, she cannot hear me. Okay, uh, Martha, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, okay, go ahead. It's your turn to speak for a couple of minutes. Um, okay, what if I do this? Let me see so I can talk to you. Meet yourself. No, but it should come out here. So it should be okay. The mic makes it. Okay, got it. Okay. Y you said you want me to speak for a couple of minutes? Marta, can you hear me? Marta? No. Okay, Marta, we need for you to talk now. We're trying to get you to go. Well, I can You're tell on. you a little bit about... Uh, oh, no, I'm, so talk I'm, to the whole audience, please, yes? Please I'm speak. muted. This one is muted. I can't... Okay. <laughs> um, 
Um, okay, hi, hi everybody. Um, my name is Marta Ramirez. I'm one of the EVO coordinators. Um, I started in EVO in 2016 as a moderator, and uh, actually I took the teaching pronunciation differently session and the flipped learning session. And then one year later, I was invited to become a moderator of the flipped learning session. Um, so I've been a moderator of this session for three years. And uh, last year, I joined the coordinating team um, to help out with everything that, that goes on um, in order for EVO to be able to work. Okay, thank you. We heard that, and we're okay. Uh, good. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess let's let's move on from the program. Thank you very much, Martha. We're very experimental, and we're just uh, we're just uh, yeah okay yeah okay. Just, I was just telling Martha, telling Martha this is just this an, experiment, an experiment, and, and we're learning, we're learning how, to how to do this. Okay, okay. So, so should we move on the program? Muted. All right. So lots of little irons in the fire here. Okay. So this is our program. Uh, next, I believe, is uh, Jane. Or is it? No, it's uh, who's next? Next is. Rosalind. Rosalind is next. Yeah, okay. That's no problem. Do we have a clicker? Does this work? Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I think we're learning how to do it for next time. Okay. okay. So this is Rosalind Billy talking about ba basic linguistics for English teachers. Welcome and thank you for joining us this morning. I was one of the co-moderators for Basic Linguistics for English Language Teachers and of the EVO sessions. I um, was also joined with Dr. Carmen Medina and Dr. Lana Hassett, who unfortunately are not able to be here, but they did pre-record some of the slides prior for our presentation this morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us in our session today. 
Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to be with you in person, but here we are and bringing you basic linguistics for English language teachers. Just a short summary. I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague and friend, Dr. Uh, Carmen Medina. She is currently the program coordinator of uh, Foundations. She is a, a lifelong learner, passionate about online learning, and uh, we came together to, uh, to uh, create the EVO uh, session because of our common interest. Dr. Lana Hiasat, my colleague, is another participant together with Dr. Roslyn Billy, who is fortunately there with you. And the three of us got together and designed and planned basic linguistics for English language teaching teachers, a part of EVO 2019. The course was divided into five weeks, as you already know. We started with an introduction on linguistics, and this introduction included notions of the difference between linguistics and language. Um, there was a meet and greet session, and so forth. Then week two was dedicated to pronunciation of English and aspects of the pronunciation of English, together with a guest speaker, Dr. Hussam Azaini, who is a colleague of ours here at HCT, where we're currently working in Dubai. Technical difficulties. Unfortunately, we are having some technical difficulties, so we shall move on. Okay, what they were talking about in the video were giving you a synopsis of the objectives of the course. It was a five-week course, and we had, the first week, we had introductions, and we had the second week, phonetics, and third week, morphology and syntax, fourth week, semantics, pragmatics and culture, and language, and we had a few guest speakers. We did do live Zoom sessions, and also we did live Twitter sessions as along with the participants in the course. Uh, week five, we developed an action plan that the participants could then use to uh, move forward to implement any of the strategies and content that was learned during the five weeks, how they would go back and implement that in their course uh, or their own teaching practices later on in, the, in their process of professional ongoing, ongoing learning. Besides creating um, an EVO course, we realized we created a, a professional learning community virtually. Um, we realized with, uh, in 1995, Cruz, Lewis, and Brick derived characteristics that are considered a professional learning community. And what we realized as moderators is that we actually created a virtual learning community as well within these four characteristics. We had reflective dialogue through the discussions that we had on the weekly basis and our Zoom sessions and our live Twitter sessions. We had focused on student learning, which was the content that we presented. And we presented the content in such a way that allowed participants to take that material and put it into immediate practice back into their courses and their classrooms. We also had interaction among teacher and colleagues through our Zoom sessions, through our participation in the dialogues, um, through our t live Twitter sessions. We were their facilitators of their learning. We were not just the moderators. We were their facilitators of their learning. And we also had shared values and norms amongst the participants in the five-week session because they were all passionate about teaching English as a foreign language and teaching ELL students. So we had participants from all over the world, from the Middle East, from Asia, from the United States, South America, and even Canada and Europe. And we all were able to share and participate and share documents in their learning styles. So we did exactly create an authentic professional learning community in a virtual setting. With that being said, we were grasping Malcolm Noe's theory of andragogy, and we saw that very much present in our course because we were able to allow students to take that five weeks 
of that course, the material right back into their classroom. So they were invested, they understood exactly what they wanted to take back, and they were able to take back that learning. We would like to thank you and open up for any questions that you have from any participants. Thank you. Um, okay, probably, okay, thank you. If anybody has a question, you can ask one, but otherwise we're going to move on. We're actually, we're not too far off schedule and we also have a little bit of time. We've planned time at the end of the uh, program for questions. So if you'll be around, we, we, if, if we have time, we can ask some questions then. So at the moment, let's see, let me put this back on uh, what we're doing thing. We're going to hear from Jane Xian about EVO Minecraft MOOC. And we're only uh, 10 minutes behind schedule, which is not too bad. Okay. Yeah. I saw that you had yours up there. Okay. And EVO Minecraft MOOC is my section too, so I might as well talk about it. Uh, it's, I'll start. Uh, it's a, the purpose of EVO Minecraft MOOC is to invite teachers to play with us in order to learn about how gamification in the classroom works. Okay, so I'll let Jane talk about it now. This is Jane Xian, one of our co-moderators. She and I presented uh, at the, uh, at, in the Chicago. So here we're, we're repeating our same picture from Chicago. I guess we could have just put that one up. Yes. No one would know. Okay, anyway. Okay. Thank you. Um, I am Jane Chen, and I'm from the National Taipei University of Education from Taipei, Taiwan. And it's a pleasure to be here. Um, to share with you some of the highlights of our EVO Minecraft move this year. Um, I was going to ask the audience how many of you know Minecraft and how many of you um, have kids that play Minecraft. Yeah, I see a couple hands and yes, my son um, plays Minecraft um, starting from very young and in Taiwan. Um, we speak Chinese, and um, but he's learned a lot of uh, English from watching videos on on YouTube about people playing um, Minecraft, and that's why um, I started um, coming to this session, founded by Vance, um, and participated in this community, and and it's amazing. This is our fifth year, and it, it's my third year participating um, in our community, and. You can see that on this slide that we have uh, a total of 391 members in our community and, and um, that Minecraft is very popular. In 2016 alone, um, it's sold more than 100 million copies and I think the number has, been, um, has gone up since it's 2019. Um, and this is the space we um, discuss and share uh, what we learn as a community. This year we had a total of 30 live events during EVO Minecraft MOOC and uh, live events is like uh, we come online onto the Minecraft um, server and we interact with the participants. We learn together, build something together, and explore how language learning can be uh, done in Minecraft. And um, Vance here, um, he's an expert in streaming, so he streamed most of the, our, our um, online live sessions. As anyone can see, I'm an expert at streaming. <laughs> Okay, and um, one of our first um, live events is the immersive sto story adventure that Dakota created for us. And Dakota believes that our brains are wired to learn through stories that are told. And so um, he built this um, uh, creeper, love, hug the creeper, share the love adventure, and having all the participants um, be as one of the characters in the stories and we explore and, um, uh, and go through this adventure together and um, through this narrative of building, you know, this narrative and within the Minecraft context, nowadays if you go onto YouTube, there are a lot of stories told um, uh, through Minecraft and I think that's a, a very a big potential for learners to create stories online and if you're interested in creating stories, digital, digital storytelling through Minecraft, please join us next year. 
Also, our community, uh, it's, it's a participatory culture, and it's actually learning on demand. Um, if you see um, um, Vance here, um, uh, Don has requested that uh, um, he wanted to, to know how to stream green, uh, gameplay, and Vance uh, created a video of, that teach us how to make game, gameplay videos on OBS Studio. So we could go back to that video and um, learn how to stream our play. And, and this is for uh, Don's research. He's, a, he's actually recording our gameplay and analyzing the um, conversations and the dialogues uh, and, uh, that we, we had interacted in during the play. And it's amazing. Um, also, Olive Tree um, hosted our town hall building together and um, we've explored how to build houses and that there are tons of different types of woods, birch woods, and, and we're learning it together. Also we have our other co-moderator, Marseilla, based in Romania and he's an expert in coding in Minecraft and um, I was very happy that my son and Rose's uh, 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 another co-moderator, co Bard Rose, uh, this son based in B Brazil, Emmanuel. Um, he's uh, both Maddie, my son, and Emmanuel uh, got to learn to how to code um, th um, um, uh, this this time. So, if you're interested in coding in Minecraft and learning languages, uh, please join our um, community. Also this year, um, I hosted a building challenge and explored the possibility of language learning through building challenges in Minecraft. And this year, uh, this is the lesson that Rose and I have created and Dakota helped, Dakota helped build uh, uh, the scene uh, for, for, the, for the building challenge. And um, this is a lesson plan for, origin originally for basic uh, learners, but then we found out it's more uh, suitable for intermediate learners. And after um, like uh, t like uh, ten participants uh, joined this lesson planning uh, experiment, and we we had them uh, sep you know divided into three different groups, and we cre uh, recorded um, their building. And this year, it because it's the uh, year of the pig, so the theme is to build a pig, and so. Um, they built a pig together. We have three different types of pigs in. And after this lesson, we kind of reflected on how, uh, what's, what goes, what, what didn't went well, what went well in this uh, language lesson. And um, I think there's a potential of uh, uh, using Minecraft as a platform to learn, to, for language learning because um, when it's synchronous, um, online, face-to-face, -face, like uh, language learning, Learners just get to repeat after the teacher and perhaps um, do um, through Blackboard. It's very limited, but in a Minecraft setting, people get to build together. I mean, kids get to interact and build something together to create and, and problem solve. So there's a great potential um, um, of uh, teaching the English language through Minecraft. And I think that um, kids would love it. And here's a building challenge lesson plan. And you, if, you, uh, if you're interested, you could click on it. You could, if you use Minecraft, you could just adopt our lesson plan. And we have our um, video recordings if you'd like to, to take a look at them. Um, all right, is my 10 minutes up? Oh, OK, so um, I, we have more, um, perhaps tomorrow. Uh, Vance would like to share more, but because of the interest of time, uh, that concludes our, my sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're um, trying to uh, allow anybody who made the trip here to speak, and it's my turn tomorrow. I'll do something similar about Minecraft, and Jane will be sitting there trying to drive it. So uh, anyway, right now, we're going to have uh, Juliana Diaz, okay, and Martha is waiting in the stream. She could join you in the presentation if she likes. She's there. So um, I think we need to get that onto this computer over here. This is, we didn't choreograph this perfectly. We didn't choreograph this uh, as we started. But you, know, you could talk, uh, start telling who you are, and I'll bring your slides up here. Yes. 
Hi, good morning. My name is Juliana Diaz. I'm one of the moderators of Flip Learning session. Um, I started two years ago. Well, first I started as a participant, and then I became one of the moderators of this session. Well, uh, our topic today um, is flip learning. This is a new approach that I would like you to, to join, and of course, uh, it happens in five weeks. Well, we start, this is our team, and um, well, we are uh, different English language teachers and from all over the world. As you can see, we have Colombian contingency there. We have a, a really good group of uh, teachers from, uh, um, who started, for example, uh, this session, John Graney and, and Jeff. They started this uh, session about flip learning. They are experienced flippers. And then they were spreading the word, the word and Colombia uh, was in charge also in this part. Also, we have Gabriela Gariboto. She is from Argentina. And Birgit uh, Jensen, she is uh, from Germany, and we have uh, Katia Offert, she is from France. And um, well, this uh, is an online professional development um, course, and uh, we use different tools uh, to participate and also to uh, discuss the different topics that we will cover during this five weeks course. Well, um, we started with the first week, which is an introduction of, of flip learning. And we use different kind of tools to present ourselves, our information. For example, we use Flipgrid to create these short videos and discuss a little bit about our uh, teaching context. This is uh, in order to know how to incorporate flip learning in our, in our teaching practices. So then uh, we start covering each one of the, the pillars of flipped learning. So we start with the flexible environment, learning culture, then we move to the intentional content, and fi finally the professional educator pillar. So one of the highlights of these sessions is that we have time to create uh, and design our lesson plan incorporating the, the, these principles of flipped learning. And of course, um, if you are a tech teacher, we, you can use a lot of tools to engage your students in the individual learning space if you are flipping any component of your, of your classes. Of course, uh, there is time to curate and create materials based on what you want to flip. And um, there is room also for peer assessment using different checklists. So we are learning from our colleagues at the same time. These are our tools that we use to communicate. The first one and the most important one is Anvil. This is a, um, a tool that we have uh, all the course content and also the dates of each one of the weeks. Google Plus is used to have some discussion questions and interact with all the participants in, the, in this field. Flipgrid is, as I mentioned before, it was uh, used uh, as an introductory tool to create a short a one minute video about uh, ourselves. Then we use Twitter and uh, w one of the highlights of this year is that even um, Aaron Sams and John Berman joined in this conversation in Twitter that we were discussing about uh, research and flipped learning and uh, professional education. And then um, we have Zoom because we, we usually have this uh, live webcast um, sessions on Sundays, and we have our um, special guest speakers uh, according to each one of the topics of, the, of, uh, of each one of the weeks. Well, one of the, another highlight that I would like to share with you is that we, have, we had 230 uh, participants from over the world. All of them were English teachers. So we have teachers from India, USA, Colombia, of course, and Croatia. Argentina, Vietnam, all, all over the world. So they were, we have created a, an online community and we, we had a really good time during these five weeks. Well, I would like to share one of the, well, two takeaways from this course. They, well, teachers are taking baby steps implementing this flipped learning approach and, and designing um, uh, improved lesson plans, taking into account these pillars that I mentioned before. And of course, they said that some of them are uh, 
like expanding their knowledge on this topic and they are using in class flip for for the ones who don't have technology access at home for those students who don't have this uh, technology access and of course it's sometimes it's a bit confusing for them but then they can they see that the meaningful part of including this approach thank you so much Okay, now we're going to put uh, one of uh, Juliana's co-moderators, Martha, back into the stream. Okay, I think we've worked out the uh, choreography now, so she'll fix it, she'll fix it. Okay, um, so just to, to add a little bit to what Juliana was mentioning regarding the session, this is a session that we um, that has been going on for more than four years, and um, every year we innovate uh, the content. We 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 work very hard uh, with the different co-moderators to update the information to include new. Um, new research or you know new um, new new tasks. This year in particular, something that we worked a lot on was on mindset and uh, the growth mindset. So within the takeaways that Juliana shared, you could see that teachers are reflecting on how they're changing. You know, like having a a change in how they are seeing their classes and how they want to innovate, and uh, then they're open to making mistakes, to failures, and to becoming better, better educators. So we, we also have new, uh, we have new participants every year, but we also have participants who come back and learn new things. So um, if you're interested in joining our session, we want to invite you to join us here um, for, for what's coming um, with this new with this new year. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, I'll be setting up the, uh, the computer here for the next presenter, which will be Jose, I believe. Jose De Silva, talking about uh, ICT for ELT. I got all that right, right? Okay, come on, you can get started and, uh, yeah. and speak to people. We're not that far behind in the program, so we're doing okay. okay. no problem. Yeah. So. We have time, but time is money, yeah. I wish it were. Okay, so hello everybody. Okay, I'm José Antonio da Silva, yeah, a very common name in Brazil. I, um, I've been teaching for, I mean, I think I lost count, for almost 30 years. And uh, I teach in the Binational uh, Institute in Brazil. And I part, I'm part of the innovation team we call innovation because it used to be Mall, uh, it used to be ad tech monitor and then mall monitor and then we know that teaching is innovation is beyond uh, computers and but I'm very involved in call and uh, the session we work on is called ICT for ELT it's a session that we've been running since uh, 2014 uh, a big part of the what the session is we owe it to uh, uh, ball, it is becoming a web head. Uh, this was a session that started back in 2002, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it? Um, 2002, I guess, with Daphne Gonzalez and Teresa Dessa. The, web heads in the, the web heads in action, exactly. Yeah, 2002. So they ran the, they ran the session for until like 2013, and then they say, oh, we're not running this anymore. And then we, uh, we started this session that's uh, ICT for ELT. Uh, we owe this to Svetlana Obanosova, if I'm mispronouncing her name. She's from the Czech Republic. Uh, she said, that's called ICT for ELT. So ICT for ELT stands for uh, Information Communication Technology for English Language Teaching. This is ICT for ELT is an entry level course uh, session, sorry, it's not a course, it's a session for uh, those who uh, want to, to start using technology with their uh, students, you know. So the goal of the session is to 
I mean, to usher teachers that feel insecure, that are kind of technophobic, to be technophiles like we are, you know? So we take slowly, we start really small, and we move them along, uh, introducing, integrating technology with their, uh, in their classes. So uh, basically what we do is a very hands-on kind of uh, workshop, you know. Uh, we start with, uh, we use the wiki, we use PBWorks for the last years, it was 2014, we used 2014, 2015, 2017, 2018. We decided to change this a bit because it was sort of a bit, so we had to introduce, we always go something old, something, you know, we always introduce something new to uh, have our, uh, the, 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 those that are, uh, that enroll for our sessions to experiment with. So we, uh, we, st we stopped using a wiki and we started with Google Classroom because before we would have two wikis, one for the course syllabus uh, for directions and another for participants in which they had to add it and so on and so forth. So now we are doing uh, the tests in Google Classroom. And let, let me just move on here. So you tell me how I'm doing times of time, all right? So, yeah, okay. My slides, my slides. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, the slides are here, all right, yeah, okay. Okay, great. Yeah, this is my... Uh, so uh, uh, we, uh, I'm very thankful to the group of moderators we have. Okay, we've been together for a while. We always try to recruit moderators that are involved and uh, that help a lot. That are interested. You try to bring them into the team. You know, I mean, AVO is volunteer work. I always tell my group, uh, the group of moderators I belong to, because we work at different times, you know? Like, I have a lot of time, like in July, so I go and do lots of stuff, and then I get too busy, you know? And then we, we just uh, take turns, you know? So the moderators who, uh, to whom I'm very thankful, okay? We, we wouldn't have done anything without them, without the participants. Uh, Ayat Tawau in Egypt, me in Brazil, of course. There is uh, uh, Mariana Smoltek in Croatia. All right. There is uh, Isniza, Isniza Flipovic. I think she is in uh, in Serbia. Let me just check. You know. Okay. Okay. Isniza is. Uh, yeah. She is. Uh, she is in Serbia. Yeah. That's right. Uh, there is uh, Efrazin Zoniu uh, in Greece, and Sanja Bosnovic is in uh, Croatia as well. And there is uh, uh, Tiziana Angiolini in, um, in uh, Italy and, uh, and Svetlana in uh, the Czech Republic. So this is the group of moderators, you know, it's like, yeah, people from different countries, you know. Uh, so, like I said in the beginning, so we try to use uh, uh, tools that are, you know, we use them, we have uh, teachers experience these tools and discuss how they could use it in class. Uh, the main platform was Google Classroom, so we have, we give them a perspective of a student, so you create tasks for them in Google Classroom, you know, so we, uh, we, we are not, no longer in Google Plus, we used to use Google Plus, but you know Google Plus is phasing out, so it was a very lucky move. Okay, so we use Sway, which is, Sway is a platform of, of Microsoft. It's, uh, it's very similar to Google Slides, but you can insert videos and it's really cool. So we, uh, we generally make uh, something, create something in that platform, and we ask the students as a task. It's optional, it's not mandatory. They can play around with uh, many tools. So we use Google Docs, which is very, uh, uh, they liked it a lot, you know. Uh, we also use Kahoot in our quiz uh, week. We use Linoit as uh, a wall. Those are not all the tools used, you know, There's just the main. We had used Adobe Spark, you know, which is like recording slides over slides. And Modo, which they really appreciate, and Prezi. Uh, the highlights that I'm going to show you, uh, because we divide our wicks, okay, according to what we're going to present them. 
Uh, our first week is called, I mean, getting to know each other in a cyber landscape. This, uh, this picture is a, a picture of one of the highlights of this week, which was an activity that we did. We create this, uh, this uh, collaborative Google Doc, which is an open Google Doc. You don't have to sign in to add it. And the question was, so uh, what, was, uh, what did you want to be as a child? What was your childhood dream? And uh, how do you connect this to what you do now to being a teacher? So we have pages and pages and pages of this. So what teachers did, they went there, they answered this question, and then the other teachers came and reply and commented and interacted. So this was a very nice kind of uh, icebreaker into our session. So this is like, uh, this is one of the highlights of week one. Um, in week two, uh, we decide, we always try to bring mobile learning and a kind of BYOD policy into our sessions because I think it's really important because nowadays the students do have their mobiles with them, you know, so we try to insert this kind of thing. In the past, we've been working with the, the uh, same R model, reference model, but there is this thing called the triple wave framework. So what we did, we just put this there and we used again a Google doc and ask teachers to uh, uh, design activities. You always put a sample activity and teachers go there and they design an activity that they think would qualify for the three E's in the triple E framework, you know? And I mean, it doesn't have necessarily to meet all the criteria, all the three E's, but you have to think about that when you use technology. So not only about using technology for technology's sake, but using technology for pedagogical, uh, having in mind pedagogical principles. So that was our goal for week two, in which we have, we also have, uh, we had Nick Hockley presenting about mobile learning for us, we do have live sessions we had three live sessions I think at yeah, three live sessions so live sessions are good because teachers come and they interact with the presenter okay week a week three we call our presentation tools week uh, week so this was the week in which you we show uh, we showed them we sh uh, kind of showcased uh, different tools for creating slides or podcasting and this is something that wh what we did for this week we could we always use a tool to talk about another tool so what we did for this week we create a, a, a collaborative Google slide because you can do that you know just create a, a slide template you create lots of slides and we ask teachers to share something that they did with one of the suggested tools that were like Sway or Google Slide or, um, or uh, Photo Pitch, the other tools. So they just created and shared the links here, you know, on a Google Slide. So this is just one of those slides. So we have like 20 uh, slides with different uh, presentations that they share. So it's, it's really inspiring, you know, I think it was really useful. Uh, in week four, we explored, I mean, creating quizzes and exercises online. Uh, this is something from learning apps. I don't know if you're familiar with it. You know, learning apps allows you to create uh, crossword puzzles, uh, multiple choice quizzes, lots of things. So this is one thing that was created by one of our uh, participants and shared. You know, so in week four, we create quizzes like that you would create Kahoot or quizzes, you know, that's the week in which they create assessment, kind of devoted to assessment, online assessment. Hot Potato is one of their favorites. They also like Photo Peach that allows you to create quizzes. And uh, so it's four weeks, okay? Week four is our wrap up week. Uh, we, uh, we asked uh, suggestions from participants, you know, so this is, uh, and I think the one, one of the most rewarding things in, I think, in EVO in general, and is the sense of community and the feedback we get from our participants. Like I was telling you, it's not always that you can be there and present, especially me, because in my case, you know, I mean, at, by the third week, it's in service in our school. So I got so busy that I cannot log in. I feel kind of guilty. But then when I went back and I saw the feedback, you know, all their, uh, I mean, their feedback, oh, thank you, it changed my life. And one good thing about ICT for EOT is like people keep coming back. 
you know, it just have to innovate, you know, we always try to show them something new, try to twist things and tweak things, all right, so this is the feedback from a, from a participant from Croatia, I think, you know, and she says that we use Q, uh, QR codes and we, it's always very rewarding, all right, and uh, so to be continued because we always have, we are always back, you know, it's just kind of addictive, like the community. And coming to TSO and meeting people like Vance, like Juliana that I haven't met, but she was there, or Marta, or uh, Christine, and everybody is just rewarding. So that's, that's what I had to say, right? I hope you... Uh, if you are listening, just join if you all, you know, we have, we usually have how many, how many sessions, like 18, how many sessions did we have? 16. 16 sessions, yeah, 16 sessions, thanks Juliana. And uh, in this session of ICT uh, for ELT, we had uh, 144 participants, and we have to consider people that sometimes they don't go through the end, but they learn something, then they come back. So lurking is a form of learning that you have to take into consideration when you do online uh, teaching, you know? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jose. All right, well, the really super amazing thing about the session today is that we're actually on time. We're, we're it's moving smoothly, believe it or not. Okay, so uh, Judy is going to, Judy Wong is going to speak to us now. Uh, which, what session? Remind me. Oh, young, uh, teaching English to young learners, yeah. Okay, yes. Oh, good. And she's, she knows exactly what to do. Okay, yes, excellent. It becomes intuitive after a while, you know. It's just getting that intuition into your head that's the hard part. Uh, oh, you, uh, let, let me get it for you. I'll get it for you, yeah. Okay, we're good. You got it up in a PDF. Oh, it is a PDF. Yes, it is a PDF, but I just want the full thing. Can we do that? I'll work on it. Open the slide. Let me make this slide. Full page, yeah. That's a good question. I don't usually use Google Slides, so I can't tell you that part. Okay, well, well, I'm working on that. Okay. Oh, wait, you oh can, I know. Hold on. Yeah, okay, I got it. it. I got okay, it. Okay, let me mention also just more a little more housekeeping that we have three more presenters. There's Judy, who's going to talk to us. She's our last in the flesh online uh, live <laughs> on-site presenter, and then we have two more presenters coming at a distance on Zoom. And now we've worked out how to do that. That should work fairly well. So we, and we have until the, we have an, another hour for this. So everything should be fine. Cool. Okay. Hey, good morning. Um, welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> so uh, I'm one of the moderators for teaching EL, EFL to young learners. Um, there are five of us. Um, we've been doing this every year for, I don't know, forever. <laughs> Um, of the moderators, um, at the top of the screen there, you'll see is Dr. Nellie Deitch, who is one of the team uh, coordinators for the whole Evo thing. And she's the one who dragged my behind into this. So <laughs> God bless her soul. Dr. Nellie is out of Toronto. Um, she's an amazing uh, facilitator. She's an amazing trainer. Uh, uh, she's, she predominantly does the Moodle. Um, and our platform is usually on Moodle. Um, we also have myself, who um, I'm out of New York. I'm a New Yorker. And um, I am also teach everything from three-year-olds to 80-year-olds. <laughs> so I do do the gamut. Um, I'm also a professional performer as well as an artist. Um, then we have Nives, who is down there on the corner there, and her and Shirley and Cheryl, um, they both were doing our games uh, section. And uh, Nives is out of Italy, and Cheryl comes up to us from Kansas. And then we have our lovely Charles Goodyear, who is um, UK, and um, so, what we do is we, we have a five-week session. 
Uh, we begin our session with, um, ooh, let's see if we can do this, whoops, hold on. We have five weeks to our session here. Um, the first week is an introduction that we, we meet everybody and we get to know everybody. And then the second week I come in and I teach a dramatic storytelling in storybook reading to our um, participants, because um, that's what I specialize. I am a professional storyteller and storybook reader. Um, and then week three, we had Nives and Cheryl come in to do games and teach everybody how to make board games on their own. And um, then the th fourth week, we come in with Charles, who works on songs and how we incorporate really fun, wonderful songs in our teaching of our young ones. And then the fifth week is a really cool session where we work on showing our participants how to use um, resources when you have a very low or non-existent resource classroom the, the different types of resources that we could use so um, what was our target audience our target audience are not just young learner teachers but anybody who works with young learners uh, whether they're parents or caregivers we had over 400 participants this year which was an outrageously overwhelming amount, but we managed to pull it together and hang in there. <laughs> um, it was an amazing, amazing group. We had this gigantic, huge group from uh, Vietnam, which we were very, very excited to have because they were people who were coming from exactly where we wanted to get to reach, which were teachers who are in areas that are very low resources, or very remote and would never be able to get these kind of professional development because um, they just can't afford it or travel and we were really happy to share what we could with them. Move it down. Oh, okay, the mouse is worth. All right, so our first week, we get acquainted. Um, we decided to, because we're always learning too, <laughs> we decided to learn a new program and it was the Flipgrid and we were trying out that as our way to get everybody to introduce themselves, which was kind of cool. It's sort of like a Snapchat kind of thing. And everybody got to introduce themselves in a short and sweet. We gave them a minute and a half to tell us who they were, where they're from, and what they did. And that was really a cool way to get to know everybody. Um, in our introductory week, we also start introducing everybody to the type of tools that they're going to need to uh, document the work that we're going to ask them to do. So they learn how to use Screenomatic, they learn how to use audio tapings and video tapings, um, and we work with them, and it's an amazing thing. We, we work with them one-on-one, -on -one, practically, um, in helping them navigate it. And a lot of the teachers that we had really had never done any tech and were clueless and terrified, and by the time I was really excited, because they were like experts. So then the second week we go into, um, and that's my week, where um, we get into dramatic storytelling. And in my week, what we started to discuss, first we discuss a little bit about what is storytelling, what is storybook reading, what are the technical academic issues about it. And then we get into the reality of, okay, how do we do this? Um, one of the biggest things that always comes up every year is our young teachers are always telling us one of their hardest challenges is that the children don't want to sit still, they can't right. do it, they've got so big groups. So our first week, and, we get acquainted. Um, um, we decided to, because we're always learning too, we decided to learn a new program and it was Flipgrid. What's going on? Okay. And we were trying out that as our way to get everybody uh, to introduce it's the, themselves. It's, the, uh, it's kind of oh, cool. It's sort screen. of like a snapshot okay. kind of thing. And everybody got right, to right. introduce it's going themselves over. I get in a short it. and sweet. We gave so, a um, um, anyway, were, sorry. Um, so in, in the second week, we do um, the storybook um, telling. And in that, we learn our students, our participants are teachers and they're all teachers of early childhood um, speaker uh, English teachers um, 
their big challenge, they were saying, was that they, they have these huge classes, the classes don't want to sit still, they're too wild, they're too uninterested, and they hate books. And we discussed why they hated books and the fact that it's really because the children were being taught that books were associated with study and associated with um, work, and we needed to change that. We needed to change that world. So um, in this session with me for the week, what they learn is how to inject the idea of love. Because when you inject the idea of love in storytelling and storybook reading, stories and storybooks no longer become work and they no longer become study, but they become something that is amazing and wonderful and loving and exciting. And children remember, children will sit still for 45 minutes without even any pictures and just absorb everything you say. Um, so we do this whole thing and during the course of this, they're gonna ha they had to produce two videos. The first one was of, that, of them actually pretending to read face-to-face -face live in front of a class. And we critiqued it, we improved it, we practiced it. They did it over and over again till they really perfected their technique. Um, and then the second video that they did was an online storybook video where they learned how to create an actual storybook online video with them speaking it as a voiceover. So then we went on to week three, which was board games with Nevis and Shirley McCoy. And they taught everybody how to make board games from resources that they just have in their classrooms, different ways to do it, different ways to use um, words, math, all sorts of things. Um, and so that was a really cool thing. The, the students all made these amazing board games. They were really excited. It was really nice to hear that they were using it in their classroom as they were learning it. Um, so we were kind of really excited about that. Um, the next week we had Charles who does these wonderful fun songs and he used he teaches us how to use the fun songs in the classroom we do a whole lot of uh, working out uh, lesson plans how to do it um, worksheets he has a whole wonderful contest that he does every year which is an amazing thing um, the week five trying to get through the 10 minutes here the week five that we have um, is our low resource classroom and this is probably the most exciting one of the um, different sessions that we have during our five weeks, especially for the groups like our big Vietnam group who are coming to us from very, very horribly remote areas that really didn't have very much to do. Um, and so it was nice for them to know how that they can have, that they have more resources than they think they have and that they can do more than they thought they could. Um, so, um, that was kind of exciting. Let's see, then at the end, in the end, our participants ended up discussing the challenges, the activities, methods of teaching, storytelling, games, action songs, arts and crafts, and they, in the process, created amazing videos on storytelling, board games, did arts and crafts, and played with amazing action songs, which was really cool. Um, we have this Padlet, which let's see if I can get this up here. Where is it? I know I put it up here. Did you put it here? There it is. Okay, so this is our Padlet, <laughs> and this is where everybody, our participants, they put their reflections, they put links to the really cool projects that they did. Um, we had them upload some of their uh, videos and projects on YouTube, which was really exciting. Um, it was nice to see some of our participants who were new to this and new to Evo and new to technology and classrooms, um, that they started out being very, very raw in, in how they were teaching. And by the end of this session, it was amazing how much they blossomed and grew as teachers, and it was amazing to see like what they did as the first video versus what they did as the final video. Um, and we had some amazing uh, teachers. Um, 
I don't know. How are we doing on time? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, on um, our Evo, our little Evo doc here, since I don't want to get into much time, but during the question and answer period at the end of this, because um, I know we have a couple people coming online with us, um, there are some links here to our some of the samples of, I have one here, um, sample of a participant who did the storybook reading, and she, I have two of them, it's a playlist of two different, of the two different types of videos that were done. Um, you get a chance, it's a nice thing to look at. It was amazing, this one young lady from Vietnam, Butterfly, who did her face-to-face -face one. What she did as the first one versus what her final one, which is the one that's on the sample, is just like night and day. And it was an amazing growth, and I was really proud of her for what she did. Um, so anyway, there's that, and you know, that's uh, my last thing. Uh, where's my, oops, back to my. <laughs> All right, and anybody who knows me, I'm a neurotic about sayings and quotes, and I never leave anybody when I talk to anybody without one, so this is my one for you today. Creativity is the intelligence having fun. That's Albert Einstein, so it's really cool. And to practice any art, no matter how well or badly, is a way to make your soul grow, so just do it, which has been our theme for our whole session this year because some of them were like, I can't do this. And I was like, it doesn't matter. Just do it and have fun. Because if you're having fun, we're doing great. Thank you. Okay. So if you want this document, you can shoot that QR code. Uh, you can also find it at the, uh, at the call is2019.pbworks website. Okay, so, uh, or you can ask anybody here and we can direct you to it. But anyway, I'll leave that, that uh, QR code on for a moment. So you're in the best of EVO uh, 2019 session. We've just heard from our live, well, uh, we're all live actually, it's hard to get your mind around that, but anyway, but the ones who are here, we've just heard from the presenters who are here and uh, who came to uh, Atlanta. And we have uh, now, we have a, a lot of people in EVO who didn't come to Atlanta. We have two of them who are going to talk to us today, Maha Hassan and uh, Letizia and Daniela uh, talking, Maha is, well they're going to talk about their sessions. Maha will be next. Um, we couldn't use this computer as a Zoom computer because, well, it would be very hard to, it's got sound issues. So Zoom is running on my laptop over here. So I have to cue them into the program. I'll bring them in, and I think Maha is going to begin. She's going to share her slides on Zoom. So I'll bring her up, and uh, I'll motion her to come in because we have no connection. She can't, well, every, they're listening to the stream, but we don't really have a direct connection. Uh, so we've been working on that. We know what to do now. The, the Really, the best thing about EVO, the reason we do it, is because we learn from it. It's really worth all the time we put into it and all the time our participants put into it. So we're learning right now as you are watching and as you are learning as well. So we're modeling for you. So Stephen Downs says, teachers model and demonstrate, students reflect and practice. And we percolate those concepts, modeling, demonstrating, reflecting, and practicing. So it makes us master teacher, master learners. A teacher is a master learner. A master learner can do all of those four things sometimes at once. Okay, so anyway, uh, I'm going to bring the Zoom in, so Maha will talk to you once we get her connected. Anybody else wants to say anything up here? You can keep the crowd going. So while Vance is bringing in Maha, uh, we want to open up 
to the audience if there are any questions that you would like to ask regarding EVO. This is also for our audience online. We're very happy to take your questions. The online audience is in YouTube. We're not using, we're not in Zoom as an audience. Zoom is only bringing the online presenters here, but there's no conversation going on in Zoom. Yeah. So. Anyway, so anyway, uh, we're we're about to do it. As you can see, it's uh -huh. it's. Uh, Is she going to be on? Will she be connected here? Yes, I think the sound will come from here. connection uh, so we've been working on that confused. We this now. is Maha's so shared really screen I got EBO, confused okay the reason we do it is because we learn from it it's really worth all the time we now, oh, Maha's got the stream going on her computer she's so listening to the stream right I'll ask now, her to stop it you are watching and if you are learning as well modeling for you so even down says teachers model and demonstrate students reflect and practice and we percolate those concepts, modeling, demonstrating, reflecting, and practicing, so it makes us master teacher, master learner. A teacher is a master learner. The problem, just to explain to you, is that Maha is screen sharing, and, and I can't communicate with her, so I have to stop uh, her I'm share, or get her to stop it, so in order Maha to tell her to that she's got to her. turn off the stream. If wants to say anything up here, you can keep the crowd going. So while Vance is bringing in Maha, uh, we want to open up to the audience if there are any questions that you would like to ask regarding EVO. This is also for our audience online. We're very happy to take your questions. Oh, interesting. The online audience is in YouTube. I'm, I'm instructing her in chat on the computer. See if she got it. <clears throat> it looks like we have an online audience question coming in from Halima oh, no. Ozimova. No, no. Oh. All this. Okay, this is a problem in our configuration where uh, we don't have a way of communicating. Can with you our... hear me? Yes. Can you hear me, Vance? Can you hear me? We fixed it.
Okay. Okay. So my voice is clear now. My voice is clear now. Okay. I, I'm already sharing my screen with you. So is the screen clear for you? <coughs> Okay, uh, I will start. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, uh, hope you're having a nice uh, conference. Uh, today I'm going to speak about uh, my session, uh, which I've already shared with EBO uh, this year. Uh, it's about SEFR versus assessment and about the new revisions that took place uh, with the SEFR recently uh, and how this is going to be beneficial for teachers in uh, schools from K-12, even for those who are teaching adults uh, and uh, those who are already uh, working uh, with uh, even uh, special um, uh, with the business English as well. Uh, I have uh, introduced the SEFR. Uh, uh, it was divided among the five years uh, of five weeks that uh, we have worked on uh, with um, uh, EVO this year. And uh, we have uh, started the first week with an in, in introduction about what is SEFR. Uh, and we uh, introduced the idea that uh, uh, Neurovision SEFR started in 2001 and uh, with the main concept that uh, they, uh, they wanted to uh, put certain criteria through which teachers and um, educationalists can measure the level of the language of the different students in order to help them to move ahead and put different curricula uh, to help the students learn and develop their uh, language learning. Um, um, it, that started in 2001. And then later on, uh, by the end of 2017, uh, they started revising this once more due to the different political and social conditions that have taken place around the world and added uh, new developments uh, or uh, promotion uh, to uh, the new sector. We started the first week by introducing this idea. Uh, I gave the teachers different exercises to try to guess the different objectives of uh, the different uh, lessons and how uh, this is uh, important uh, in order to uh, decide about the objectives that we are supposed to use with our own students before we start working and what is the end goal of using such lessons when we work with our own students. Um, and then, <clears throat> and then uh, we also discussed the idea of what, what is the SEFR. It's the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. And we said that it was introduced in, uh, on two scales, uh, either uh, the one which was divided into six scales, the beginner elementary level, which was called A1, A2, intermediate and upper intermediate, which, which was called B1, B2, and the advanced or expert level, which is uh, C1, C2. The problem with these uh, six levels was that uh, when uh, uh, this, the teachers tried to measure this according to the level of their own students, sometimes they had this problem that some students don't fit in with the A1 or A2, they are in between, or even there are students who are even before A1 as well. And it went on with the B1, B2, and so on. Uh, so, um, um, one of the nicest things about uh, the SEFR is that they have added different kinds of descriptors to these levels so that they would help the teachers understand how to measure the uh, language level of their own students. Uh, this is a different way also of introducing the different levels uh, set by the SEFR. Uh, so, um, we have concentrated on the very first week. Uh, on the uh, real objective of having the suffer, which is fundamentally the suffer is a tool to assist the planning of curricular courses and examinations by working backwards from what the users of the learners to be able to do in the language. This is the most important thing, what's the end goal of the school or the teacher in the uh, really help uh, to move opinions of the suffer and tell us about the reflections about it. On the next week, we discuss the new divisions of the uh, that has been introduced through the suffer. We know that the suffer uh, was um, has divided the skills of the language into the four usual ones: listening, speaking, reading, and writing. 
but uh, they have introduced this one with the revisions of the Sefer in, uh, through a different perspective. Uh, this one. I'm sorry. Um, are you following me? Uh, they have introduced the new revisions this time uh, through uh, the, uh, the, these divisions. Uh, the very first, uh, the four divisions that they have introduced are, are the following. I'm sorry. They have uh, they, they divided these into four criteria, the general competences, communicative language competences, activities, and strategies. How did they set this? First, uh, the, with the general competences, they said we have to take a look at savoir, what the students already know, what they, and if they know, they receive knowledge, what are they going savoir fair to do with this kind of knowledge and savoir at and savoir upon, how are they going to use this in their own classes and in everyday life. And what kind of knowledge are they going to have? This kind of knowledge is divided into communicative language competences through the linguistic side. What kind of grammar or structure are they going to learn? What about the sociolinguistic side? What about their, the lessons introduced through the uh, curriculum? And uh, if it's, uh, how, uh, how is it compared to their everyday life? And uh, this is the pragmatic side. They compared, uh, they use the language that has been introduced to speak about different topics, and these topics are compared to their everyday life. And then, what kind of activities are going to be followed? Instead of following the four skills, they have introduced the reception, reception, uh, production, interaction, and mediation. Uh, through the reception, they have included the receptive skills, which are listening and reading. Production, they included the listening and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, reception, the listening and the reading. The production is the uh, speaking and the writing, the interaction, what kind of activities are going to be used to integrate the four skills together in order to be able to use the language introduced and mediation what kind what kind of media is going uh, is are the lessons going to be introduced to what kind is it going to be text a video a kind of project a project based language um, uh, task based what kind what kind of mediation is it going to go through and they had uh, they set uh, also communicative language strategies which they said these are very important, how to integrate the four of them together using the different methodologies. Scale of, the, uh, of uh, looking at the language. It's not only about giving a structure and giving the vocabulary uh, and doing listening and eat together, and they gave great importance to the idea of interaction inside the class. So again, uh, we discussed this. <clears throat> we discussed this with the teachers on uh, the first and the second week, and we explained to them what is a scale. How did they introduce? We said the scale it's the A1, A2, B1, B2, and then what are the descriptors that um, uh, they introduced through the sefer? Uh, they are the, uh, how, what should be done, what should be done exactly with each level for uh, each of the skills introduced. Um, we started discussing on the next week, uh, we started discussing the receptive skills first. We started discussing the listening and the reading. We discussed different activities that uh, can be done with, uh, to uh, show the students uh, to, to work, uh, to show the teachers how to work using these different activities with their own uh, students, even to mingle the audiovisual together, and what kind of strategies should be used. And uh, we uh, asked the teachers to reflect on the lessons that they have already given or uh, think of different lessons to which they can use these different activities and give us uh, their feedback about this. Uh, the next week we discuss the production activities, the speaking and the writing, and again with the different kinds of activities and ask the teachers to give us uh, lesson plans or uh, activities that they have already applied uh, with their own students uh, or they think they would like to apply with their own students introducing such uh, uh, different, uh, these different ideas for the productive activities. Uh, we moved on also to discuss the interaction and ask the teachers to take a wider look at the activities that they are introducing to their students and how to uh, 
use varieties and try new ones in class in order to help their own students. And then we discuss the idea of mediation again once, uh, once more. Mediation uh, was given a great importance uh, through the new revision of the Sefer because uh, they discuss with the teachers here or they give a wide variety uh, for the teachers what is mediation exactly, what kind of texts can be used and uh, the text should reflect some kinds of concepts and these concepts should be done through communication and what kinds of strategies should be used to mingle all this together to help the students to use the language in context and then to use it later on to, uh, to, about every, uh, uh, to speak about everyday life and compare what they study with their own real li uh, life. This, uh, we have done this during the third week. And this was an example from the different activities how they could be applied. And we showed them the different, um, uh, uh, an example from the Sefer about mediation and how is mediation assessed by the teachers in class. Uh, but through the different levels from A1 to C2. And here you can find uh, mediating a text, mediating concepts, mediating communication, and how the students in each case um, interact or um, um, uh, how are they doing um, towards the lessons that they are learning and how far are they achieving any of these criteria. So this would help the teacher to be uh, up uh, updating herself or himself all the time and be able to take, to take um, uh, a good look and revise and reflect on the different activities uh, given to the students so that they uh, would uh, be able to develop and improve uh, and enhance the kind of work they are giving to their own students. Uh, again, um, through the SAFR also we discussed the idea of the online interaction and they gave, again, great importance to the descriptors of this uh, through the SAFR and as you can see, they have um, a, a set uh, a different kinds of evaluation or assessment, assessment uh, to the different levels of uh, online interaction uh, and they have set it as uh, on the personal basis in public if they are interacting with others online occupationally if they are doing it for a kind of, of job or educational they are interacting with uh, people on in different schools around the world so we have also this done and provide us with different lesson plans or different ideas that we have applied in class. Um, we all, uh, through the SAFR also during week four, we discussed the two ideas of plurilingualism and pluriculturalism, to which the SAFR this time gave great importance due to the great changes that have been taking place um, during the, um, um, uh, through the political and economic life lately during the last few years. And uh, due to the, um, um, uh, increase in the different uh, 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 nationalities in the teachers' classes, uh, they have to face this idea of plurilingualism and pluriculturalism and how they can deal with it in class. So again, uh, we and uh, they introduced the, the idea of plurilingualism and culturalism, and then they set again different kind of, kinds of criteria for them through which we can assess our work with the students again and they set different ideas and activities that can be used as well to uh, use the idea of plurilingualism in class and help the students to integrate with each other and get the best results um, to learn the language. Uh, one of the greatest uh, additions to the sector which was discussed on the very last again week of uh, the EBO uh, was uh, the, uh, the, the uh, appendix that they have added uh, to um, uh, the SAFR, uh, two different appendixes, one uh, for people who are teaching students uh, from 7 to 10 years old and the other one from 11 to 15, 11 to 15. And uh, they have set different criteria for the teachers. They have set for them, as you can see over here, um, and they have set uh, what is the criteria of an A1 student, is it relevant for that age from 7 to 10, for example, and through this the students can say, I can, I can, I can do so and so. So the teacher can even help the student to self-reflect, and at the same time the teacher has the capacity or has the awareness of the abilities of the students at these levels. These two appendixes are wonderful ones, and we ask the teachers again to reflect on them and then to uh, give us their own opinions about this. Um, and so if you go to them, um, if you go to the different link links that we have in here, um, these are the references, these are the links of the um, uh, of the descriptors, the new revisions of the SAFR, the 
the old volume of the Cycle of 2001, the new one of the revisions, and the, as well the two appendixes for uh, the te uh, teachers who teach K-12 or even who teach others. You can go there, you can follow the different kinds of assessments they have set for the different um, skills and then you can try to apply to your own classes this are going, can help you a lot with the assessment of the development of the learning of their students thank you very much i hope i haven't exceeded the time that much thank you vince thank you everybody Uh, presenters talking about their CLIL. Uh, you know what CLIL is? They'll tell you. Anyway, it's the, uh, we have one more presentation. Letizia and Daniela are going to talk. I'll cue them up. I'll get them started. Okay. So first of all, thank you for this great opportunity. It's a great pleasure for us to be here. So thank you, Vance. Is okay? The audio is okay? Okay. So um, Daniela and I are talking today about um, TechnoClil, which is one of um, EBO sessions. And uh, we are privileged to be here okay. from uh, Italy. Uh, I'm in Rome and Daniela is in Naples. So hello, everybody from, from Italy. So Daniela, can you go um, to the next? Um, we're going to uh, tell you something about our um, session, TechnoClil, which is a combination of CLIL and technologies. Uh, and um, here in this picture from um, UDD's um, uh, report from the European Commission, you can see um, a map about the uh, provision of CLIL all over Europe. CLIL is the um, um, integration of content and language. So um, it means that um, we learn um, subject content, um, uh, humanistic or scientific content through uh, a foreign language. It could be English, but it could be any other foreign language because um, the idea is uh, the, the the background, of course, is plurilingualism. So um, the idea is um, to use a um, uh, foreign language, uh, any foreign language, for learning content. Um, so here you can see uh, this, this map of uh, clear um, provision over Europe, and Italy is um, one of the bravest countries because we've adopted CLIL as mandatory in all upper secondary schools according to our form law. So Daniela, you can go um, to the next. Um, here you can have a look at the uh, global perspective of our, of our session. Um, TechnoClear, um, as I said, is a combination of clear and technology. So um, how to use uh, technologies, um, web tools, and um, all that has to do with the, with the internet, with the platform and multimedia, uh, to implement and, of course, improve um, uh, clear lessons. That, that is the focus of our session. And here you can have an idea of 
um, how many participants we had in um, uh, our five sessions because we started in 2014 and we had five uh, editions, five sessions, um, participants from all over the world. And this is also because um, Kalil um, is becoming global. So um, we've got, uh, yeah, you can, you can have an idea of the um, logos of the different sessions from 2014, 16, 17, 18, and the latest one in 19. Um, so um, we, we had participants from um, every country and um, we reached the uh, top, the highest number of participants, um, 5,000 participants in 2017. Here you can, uh, you can see a publication, a volume that we recently published in Italian about um, our experience, about um, uh, a sort of collection of materials uh, from our participants in um, uh, in Italian and it's just um, been published um, recently. Um, so you, you can go to the next one, uh, Daniela, thank you. So here you can have an idea of um, the syllabus, the overview of the syllabus. Uh, this is actually uh, the latest um, syllabus, so in the 2019 edition, that was a little bit different from the past ones, because um, from, from the, pre the previous ones. Because we, um, uh, we have a lot of followers, we can say, so um, a number of participants following us through all uh, the editions starting from the first one and so um this year we wanted to uh, change a little bit the, the focus. So while in the first uh, editions we were uh, mainly focusing on um, um, CLEL pillars, milestones, so the theoretical um, the framework on CLEL and um, uh, um, the, the different web tools, so how guiding participants on how to experiment um, technologies for CLEL. Um, in this latest edition, we, we just um, uh, tried something new. So first of all, we wanted to have an, uh, an overview on CLEL around the world through a web quest and then we focused on language a lot because language is um, plays an important role in CLIL even if it's um, another perspective another um, sort of um, um, declination uh, of, of language uh, for different um, uh, different purposes um, and then we focus on plural literacies um, uh, with particular um, focus on the, um, a project uh, promoted by ECML the European Center for Modern Languages in Graz and then we wanted to um, guide our participants uh, through the use of uh, the latest um, and innovative um, methodologies um, uh, for CLIL such as debate and we organized um, uh, a debate um, uh, e debate, an e debate, so um, uh, debate on CLEL um, through um, web apps, through um, uh, specific web tools that we, um, uh, we wanted our participants to discover. And then the last um, uh, week, last module, repositories and video lessons, so um, uh, building up a repository of CLEL lessons um, uh, made up of video lessons with uh, a particular attention to the metacognition, um, the reflection of the participants on the use of video um, for, for CLIL. So how to um, comment on um, uh, a video lesson, um, highlighting um, strengths and weaknesses. So it was a little bit uh, different from, from the past, but uh, we wanted to give you uh, an overview of the latest uh, syllabus. Now I'll give you the floor to Daniela uh, to go on. Thank you. Okay, in, uh, in my text chat, I'm trying to get things working. There are only four people here, just bear with us. 
we have to com reach that speaker who is speaking without a microphone and tell her to start over. It's complicated. Sorry, to, Daniela, maybe there, there are problems. Is it okay now? Because Vance was, was writing about problems. It's okay? Okay, can you hear me? Letizia, can you hear me? Yes, I can, but um, Vance was... was uh... It's a okay, little so low. It's yeah. slow. So, so it was okay with me, but too low with Daniela. Is that right, Vance? So Daniela has to start start from the beginning. Can I go back? So Vance, can you hear me? No, I think no. I think I can, they, they can't hear you. Vance, you cannot hear Daniela? If I talk, what, what happens here? On the forces oh, okay. by the coil, that is, we can answer the metacognitive processes, and we will, of course, we introduce our content referring to the culture of the target language countries, and we try to implement communication processes during the five steps. And um, student participants had a, a learning diary that was a sort of cross curricular. Um, task that uh, helped them uh, to uh, reflect on uh, the processes on the learning and uh, also to, to share uh, the best moments and to highlight uh, some best practices. But we, we base also our um, uh, course on um, the use of graphic organizers and uh, infographics because we do think that uh, visual literacy is among the literacy that are um, the help people to face the 21st century challenges uh, is one of the, the best because uh, it uh, um, helps people uh, to, uh, to teach concepts and uh, also to learn new concepts and to communicate and know things uh, uh, through visual imagery, as I show in, in a moment. So we also, as the course is uh, technocleal, as well as uh, um, talking about uh, the um, uh, teaching of uh, a subject to uh, a language, so content and language, we also use a lot of technologies. And uh, we uh, implemented our course on a Moodle platform, but we also started uh, since 2014 a Facebook group that has reached now more than 8,000 participants. Uh, we, um, one, one of our um, um, key uh, aspects was uh, that we um, involved a lot of uh, experts from all over the world, CLIL, 
experts and we had uh, up to 30 uh, sessions uh, through webinars uh, that we recorded and uh, we, uh, we, uh, we just got uh, shared after uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, we also communicate using uh, Twitter and uh, um, Instagram and uh, Telegram because also we offer a, a channel uh, to give um, a live uh, news to our uh, participants. Uh, this is an example of uh, a learning diary by um, a, a teacher and uh, where we can see all uh, the different aspects uh, of uh, how uh, our learning process uh, went on. And this is a, a, a one that we like so much because uh, it is a clear example of what we mean by visual literacy. So of course, we have asked uh, these uh, participants to, uh, to create a, a mind map based on the 4C models. Uh, and these participants uh, used uh, the sketching notes uh, um, uh, model uh, to, to see, uh, to, to, to communicate um, uh, the, the lesson plan. Uh, then uh, we had an example here of uh, a digital storytelling, uh, because of course uh, not only um, manual uh, productions, but also digital ones for technical. And uh, this is the narration of uh, the, 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 the a learning path to uh, a digital um, experience. And then infographics, as you can see in the middle, we have a graphic uh, um, organizer for math for young children. And on both sides, on left and right hand, uh, hand sides, so we have uh, two infographics. It is a sort of communication of uh, info uh, through graphics uh, uh, that uh, um, was very successful for our uh, uh, participants uh, because they had uh, to, to summarize uh, all uh, the, 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 the learning path in uh, just one uh, sort of poster, as you can see here. And then, um, of course, uh, all of these uh, can be uh, found in the, our uh, book, as we did introduce at the beginning. Yeah. Um, it did say that we have been running this uh, technical course in five editions, but we joined the, the wonderful community of EVO uh, in 2011 with another course on personal learning and values. And this is for this reason that we want to, to thank Giants for giving us uh, this huge opportunity of joining uh, and uh, um, the, the group today and having the possibility to, uh, to participate in part in uh, Tizen International and Atlanta, even with that distance. So thank you everyone for uh, uh, listening to us and taking part to our webinar. And uh, we'll just with one word, uh, you think that uh, the most important thing that nowadays uh, to live and to develop our global citizen is uh, to think creative. Thank you very much to everyone. Okay. Yeah. That may have been the end of her session. Did it sound like the end? Yeah, okay, good. We have a listener. <laughs> that may have been the end of her session. Did it sound like the end? Yeah, okay, good. We have a Pull up uh, the last thing for the stream. There's a, th you're not the only audience, you know. We have how many people in the stream audience? How many hundred? Four hundred? Forty? Uh, four people. Four people in the stream audience. Yay! All these four, six, seven. And we had some people who uh, just less than we had probably what about a hundred, two hundred people here. One any any given time they came and they went. Okay, wonderful. We had a lot of fun. We learned a lot. We learned through trial and mostly error, but anyway, <laughs> we did learn. I'll put up something that the stream can see. Can uh, we'll entertain the stream. Okay.
How we go? There we are. So this has been uh, uh, the best of EVO. Put in presentation mode. Okay, there we are. This is the uh, the the date today is the 14th of March, and 2019, and we are streaming from the Electronic Village Online from the Tech Showcase here, Technology Showcase in the Cal Interest section, C A L L I 